We'll be discussing about basic trauma, trauma radiology. All patients who are admitted as a trauma resuscitation must have basic radiology studies to ascertain injury as part of advanced trauma life support, otherwise known as ATLS protocol. Trauma radiology is a very important adjunct to any trauma resuscitation. All patients have to have a chest x-ray, a pelvic x-ray, and a C-spine series. Our medical student representing a trauma patient is undergoing a standard AP supine chest film. Notice the patient must be flat during the chest film and, if possible, must inhale and hold his breath at maximum inhalation. The chest radiograph can show you multiple anatomic pathology. As you can see listed here, one can see the spinal column, the trachea, the clavicles, scapula, the ribs, the bronchus as well as the carina, the aortic knob, the pulmonary hilum, the descending aorta, and of certain soft tissue, and also, very importantly, the diaphragm and the superior aspect of the intestinal contents. This is what would be considered an abnormal chest film. If you can see very carefully, there is a pneumothorax displayed on the left side of the chest. When one magnifies the image, one can clearly see the lung marking separated from the chest wall and the airspace showing a pneumothorax. This next radiology film is what's known as a tension pneumothorax. Note the large volume of air that's that has significant pressure on the left side, and notice the mediastinal shift towards the right. This can be very lethal if not recognized early. And even though it's a nice radiologic film, should really never be present without intervention immediately happening. This is a scenario where you can see the left side of the chest filled with blood. This is a patient who was stabbed in the left chest and you notice that the actual left chest is significantly different from the right. In this specific series, note the rib fractures in the right-hand side of the chest. These rib fractures are also present with a pulmonary contusion notice as haziness in the right lung fields. In this film, we can see a chest tube in place. It's important to verify adjuncts such as intubation and chest tube placement with a multiple series of radiologic films. There's also an important finding, and that is to say the aortic knob is, is blunted and you have a widened mediastinum that could suggest a possible aortic laceration and traumatic dissection or rupture. This is a more dramatic widening of the mediastinum. Again, this widening of the mediastinum, when compared to the heart, is very suspicious for aortic injury. In this film, notice the extreme haziness of that left side of the chest. When you look very carefully, you notice that the NG tube is actually curled up into the left side of the chest suggesting a diaphragmatic rupture. Since the NG tube is in the stomach, the stomach has ruptured through the diaphragm and now is in the left thoracic cavity. The next important film are pelvic x-rays. AP pelvic films are important to ascertain injuries, especially after high energy trauma such as a fall from height or high speed MVAs. They can be helpful as adjuncts to ascertain areas of hemorrhage since pelvic fractures can be associated with significant retroperitoneal bleeding. There are various anatomical structures that one can see in a normal pelvic x-ray. You can see the lumbar spine as well as the sacrum, the anterior superior iliac spine, the acetabulum, the superior and inferior pubic rami, and of course the pubic symphysis. In this film, it's very clear that the patient has a right-sided inferior rami fracture. This x-ray is important because of the pubic symphysis. Notice the widening of the pubic symphysis in relationship to the previous normal one. Again, suggestive of an open book fracture that can be deadly if hypotensive then proceeds. In this film, notice the right-sided superior rami fracture. This is in conjunction with the right-sided inferior rami fracture. Even though the pelvic x-ray in this film is somewhat rotated, notice the significant displacement of both the right-sided and left-sided superior rami fracture and a right-sided inferior rami fracture. Lateral cervical films are very important for a variety of reasons. One, a lateral film can help stratify C-spine injury, especially in patients that are unable to communicate secondary to mental status changes or perhaps intubation. This is very helpful when a patient needs to undergo immediate operation for another injury. And number two, if a fracture is visible on a lateral C-spine, further radiologic studies can immediately be ordered in an effort to ascertain complete cervical spine injury. Lateral cervical spines are very important. 
not only do they help trauma surgeons guide management for subsequent resuscitation, but it also gives an idea of displacement of possible cervical spine injuries. In this normal cervical spine series, notice C1 and the top of T1 is visible. With that, one can see the three columns, the anterior elements in the anterior body, the vertebral space, and also the middle elements, and finally, the spinous processes comprising the posterior elements. In this example, you do not see the top of T1. Therefore, this would not, con be, con this would not be considered an adequate lateral C-spine. This is an anterior C-spine. Notice the widening of the vertebral spaces are consistent from the superior all the way inferiorly. This is a very magnified view of the odontoid. The odontoid is sometimes difficult to obtain, especially in patients that are intubated. However, in this patient, there is no obvious odontoid injury. This is a very dramatic cervical spine injury. We show this not so much to shock and awe, more to show that this type of a C-spine is very rare in its dramatic appearance. Normally, C-spine injuries are much more subtle. In this case, notice the anterior body of C4 and the fracture that comes across the ver vertebral body of C4. This is displacement of the C-spine. Even though there's no obvious fracture seen in this specific C-spine series, there's clear displacement of the anterior elements from the top of C4 to the, po to the anterior elements to the top of C5. This is very suspicious for ligamentous injury and certainly can cause spinal cord compromise. In this view, notice the middle vertebral body is also fractured. However, unlike the anterior fracture, notice the fracture is in the middle. There's also displacement of the C-spine in this film as well. There are adjuncts to trauma radiology, including a cervical swimmer's view, extremity films, and as previously mentioned, repeat chest films after either intubation, chest tubes, and sometimes central line placements. Certainly, trauma radiology would not be complete with other imaging, specifically FAST, CT imaging, and MRIs. However, for this discussion, we will keep to the basics.